Hello, hola. My name is Doug Majewski, and I'm an architect at the Design Group. Uh, architects get to design buildings for our communities. We get to design schools, hospitals, um, places for people to live. It's a lot of fun, and it's with a whole team of architects, engineers, and constructors. We get to design the plans using computers and make three-dimensional uh, views of those, and are very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, we design buildings that are energy efficient and have lots of natural light. Today, I'm going to read a book called The Lorax. It's a book about a gentleman named the Wunzler who has lots of consequences that you'll see for cutting down lots of trees. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the grinkle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grinkle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you will still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax, and why was he there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grinkle grass grows? The once still lives there. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the once Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkum on the top of his store. He lurks in his lurkum, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered muff. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks. He tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail. You have to toss in 15 cents and a nail. And the shell of a great, 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 great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snafu, his secret strange hole in his gravivious glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup. Down slups the wisp of my phone to your ear, and the old Wunzler whispers are not very clear, since they have come down through this snuggly hose, and he sounds as if he had a smallish bees up his nose. I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started back, way back a long time, Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the swung of the swami swangs rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the tuffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the tuffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barber lutes frisking about in their barber lute suits as they played in the shade and ate tuffle of fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those tuffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had a sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a tuffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuff and I knitted a feed. The instant, the instant I finished, I heard a gazop, 
I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? It's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my tuffle tuft? Do you know what it means when the Lorax says that he speaks for the trees? Well, of course, the trees can't talk, so someone has to protect the trees, and that's what the Lorax is talking about. Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a feed. A feed something, finds something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it, it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who will buy these fool's thieves. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just that minute, a chap came along. And he thought that the feed was, I knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told them. Shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, I built a radio phone, I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunzler family to get mighty rich. Get over fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at what Squeegan, turn right at South Snitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunzler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting feeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of tuffala trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented a super axe hacker, which whacked off four tuffle of trees in one smacker. We were making feeds four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I am the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I am also in charge of the brown barbel lutes who played in the shade in their barbalute suits and lived and happily lived eating tuffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough tuffle of fruit to go round. And my poor barbalutes are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cries, and he sent them away. I, the Wunzler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Do you know why the bears had to go away? Well, that's because when the trees were cut down, that was the source of the food for the bears. So they had to leave to find food in other places. That was one of the consequences and one of the results of the trees being cut down in the forest. I mean no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of the feeds that I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more feeds. And I biggered my money which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. 
I am the Lorax. He coughed and he winced. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snor snorkeled and he sniffed. Once, Lord, he cried with a cranticulous croak. Once, Lord, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swanee swans, why, they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in their throat. So why did the swans have to leave? Well, it's one of the other consequences of cutting down the trees and having a factory that polluted the air. The swans could no longer sing because of the polluted air. And so said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I am sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog that you smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about the glubbity glup. Your machinery clogs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup and sloppity slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old once man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary and search them some water that isn't so smeary. So look at the poor fish. They had a, the, their pond was all polluted from the factory, um, so they had to leave because they could no longer hum and had to go find fresh water somewhere. Another consequence of the pollution caused by the cutting down of the forest. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax, now listen here, Dad. All you do is yep, yep, and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you they intend to keep on doing what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle trees into thieves, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a, came a sickening smack of the ax of a tree. Then we heard the tree fall the very last tuffle, a tree of them all. No more trees, no more thieves, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, every one, all waved goodbye. They jumped in my cars and drove away under the smog-smuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the spat spelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing. He just gave me a glance. Just a very sad, sad backwards glance. And he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, well, my buildings have fallen apart. I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Onceler, now that you're here, the word the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So see this boy, do you think he's going to care? What do you think this boy's going to do to help out? So, catch, calls the Wensler, he lets something fall. It's a truffle seed, the last one of all. You're in charge of the last tuffle seeds, and the tuffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new tuffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. So you see, the boy cared. He actually made a difference by caring. We need everybody to care to make a difference. And you have the power to care. So we hope that you can care too and make a difference.